the Sniff Me Out, get to Australia. <laughs> Welcome to Modern Grand Tour with me, Garland Lowe. After completing the European leg of my round-the-world journey, we now arrive in the world's largest country, Russia. Riding the full length of the famous Trans-Siberian Railway, we'll couch surf with locals along the way to get an insider's view of the fascinating Russian culture. Beginning in the western part of this Eurasian country, my new Russian friends and I explore St. Petersburg, Moscow, Vladimir Suzdal, Nizhny Novgorod, Perm and Yekaterinburg. Then in the eastern part we discover Tobolsk and Tumen, Novosibirsk, Okutsk and Okhon Island, ulan Ude, Habarovsk and finally Vladivostok. In this 12th episode across Russia and the 20th in this modern Grand Tour series, we'll learn about the Soviet Union's efforts in the Second World War, inquire into the serious Russian demeanor. So when you're happy and when you're smiling and all this stuff, you look weird. Oh, it's like a window. And meet a dog called John. So let's explore the city of Habarovsk with my couch surfing host, Max. We are now in the far east, correct? Yeah. We're no longer in Siberia. No. Okay. Would you call yourself Asian or European? I think uh, European. European, not Asian. No. Not Asian. But this is the far, but this is the Asian part of Russia. Yeah, this is the Asian part, but if you look around, uh, most of people look like European. Yes. So the white skin. And, yes, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So where na- where's the next, Max? Uh, if you don't mind, mind uh, we need to do one thing. Yes. Is whatever. Walk with my dog. John the dog, who might possibly be Russia's <laughs> cutest dog, has only been John the dog for two weeks after Max newly adopted him. She can't, she can't walk slowly. <laughs> He's like me. He's just very excited. <laughs> Where did you find him? Uh, actually, some some people find him on the streets. Okay. And uh, give the advertisement. Advertisement. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. He's John. Already two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so does he understand that his he, name is John? No, he, he, didn't <laughs> he doesn't understand his name. I think they're for poo. Probably not film this bit. Khabarovsk. <laughs> Just looking at the map here. It's very close to the, the city called Fuyuan. Fuyuan. You just need to buy the tickets to the little ship. Yeah. <laughs> and after one hour. You have been there many times? Yeah. Oh. Uh, every year. Every, oh, wow. Well. So, uh, why do you go every year? Because it is so cheap. When you can say, say something on Chinese, they will say it cheaper. <laughs> but when, when Chinese people ask me to say something, and they think that I said, Ni hao. Okay, uh, okay. I said, What a Han Yu Buddha hao. All right. He said, Wow. <laughs> they already built a bridge ah. from China and from Russia. Oh, wow. Yeah, and soon we will come. We can just drive. Just drive. With the bridge not quite ready for us to take a day trip into China, we instead drove into the city centre to meet up with Max's friends Stacy and Alex. And comparing Russia to its Asian neighbours, we discussed the Russian demeanour. Our society, we look sad. You look always sad. And we feel sad sometimes and look sad. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So when you're happy and when you're smiling and all this stuff, you look weird. Oh, okay. Like a window, like why? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, why is that? We are not that confident. And when we are shy, you know, we like build a wall between okay. ourselves and the world. Right. So that's why our reaction looks like we are not yeah. happy that way. And why then do you think Russian people lack why do Koreans have problems have more? from childhood, you know? <laughs> I don't know, maybe that. Older Older people. It also describe the demands by the wife. Uh, Older yeah. people are tired by the work, by the wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory Square is dedicated to the 32,000 Habarovsk residents who died fighting in the Second World War. Now, there are two things you are guaranteed to see in almost every Russian city. The first is a Lenin statue, most likely standing on Lenin Square. And the second is a massive World War II memorial. So why are these war memorials so prominent in Russia compared to other countries I've visited? The answer might be in this graph. If one looks at death tolls, the USSR at over 25 million has experienced over twice as many deaths compared to the next country, China, with 11 million and almost four times as many as Germany with 7 million. 
If we compare the USSR to its allies, the United Kingdom and the USA, we have to focus on just this part of the chart, and then bring in a new chart which is measured not in millions, but in thousands. Which is not to disrespect those countries with fewer deaths, but rather to recalibrate our Hollywood educated and Western centric perspective regarding what we know about the Second World War. Now whilst most people in the West are familiar with the war in Europe, they are less so with the war in Asia and the Pacific. But here at the Amur River, which separates Russia from China, was the scene of the last major campaign of the Second World War, as Soviet troops sailed across the river and invaded Japanese occupied China in 1945. Notably, the Soviets captured Emperor Puyi, famously China's last emperor and the then Japanese puppet ruler of the region, and took him back to Habarovsk, where he was detained for five years before being transferred to China's new communist government. We have no uh, McDonald's, KFC, Starbucks. In London, people always complain about too many franchises, and they like and they want to see more independent shops oh, yeah. because it adds more character. This is maybe the perfect situation. You're big, but not big enough yeah, yeah. to have the big franchise. I told you that the city is good for for business. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can make your own coffee shop and it will be different than. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really, yeah, that's really true. We then went to the local burger restaurant, which indeed had a lot more character than my local McDonald's. My mum will be watching on YouTube. Hello, mummy. Hello. <laughs> the name of this square? Plochadlinina. <laughs> <laughs> so I am, I am at another Plochadlinina. So there's Garland. Lenin, Max, and um, we were just talking about how the most sculpted person ever. Yeah. Number two is number two is Lenin. Number two is Lenin. Number one is Jesus, of course. So only after Jesus, Le Lenin. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> Who's number three? Who do you think number three might be? Buddha. 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 Buddha may be number one. Buddha or Jesus? Buddha or Jesus? Okay, Lady will be number, number three. three. Yeah, I'll okay, with this. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so, I'm walking to my carriage now. It's kind of a bit at home alone where I'm just trying to get it just in time. Uh, and I've got my, my new Khabarov friends behind me. They, they drove me to the station and now uh, they're walking me to my carriage to make sure I get on the right one. Give me a hug, Max. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, the case are brilliant. Nice to meet you. Max, give me a hug as well, buddy. Thank you so much. I had a really good time today. Bye, guys. <laughs> And so, aboard the train for my last ever journey on the Trans-Siberian Railway, I could reflect in my short time that Habarovsk was a really pretty city, with its tree-lined avenues, well-lit squares and the Amur River. But of course, the most lasting impression of the city were its warm and happy people. Join me in the final episode of this Russian leg of Modern Grand Tour, where we'll be in Vladivostok, and where we'll celebrate reaching Russia's far east coast play a gig, go into a submarine, and of course, teach darts to the locals. So until next time, Godspeed.